All right, folks, hello and welcome back to Downstage Gaming. I'm your host, Josh, and this is part three on our path to truth in our Let's Play of The Letter. I just wanted to show off this little picture. We might have even gotten this one before, but just look at, look at this cutie. Becca, come on. All right, so we have just gotten to Ash's chapter here, uh, and we are continuing on our path to the true end. Uh, Ash's stuff. Pretty much our main goal here is just to see Ash dead at the end. Um, otherwise, the other things are hopefully just going to come from the choices we've already made. Uh, even with Z-Man's personal opinion of the woman, there are certain gut feelings you really couldn't shake off. Hell, Luke Wright came out clean in previous reports, <clears throat> until I bothered to take a deep look into it. Alright, so this is probably going to go a little bit different than it did last time, given the spat. But let's see... Nope. <laughs> nope, it's exactly the same. There's some trouble, that's all that matters. Ash doesn't care. So Ash gets kicked off the case. He has a little stretch with Rebecca here, a little little stretch the truth. Uh, ins let's insist that it's confidential. It's confidential, Rebecca. You know how it is. You know how I these things go. I guess if that's the case, there's nothing much I can do about it. <laughs> You're off being a what? A hero, I guess. And I shouldn't rag on you for that. I could never get used to how quick she just forgives me for whatever shitty thing I do. Zack and Isabella, too. They've all been patient with me, unlike I with them. I don't deserve any of them for the kind of person I turned out to I'm be. I'm hardly a hero, Becca. I'm just... Ash. <laughs> I expect a retort, another one laced with bitterness. <laughs> Instead, she laughs. has also been saying odd things about a bunch of photographs. That's Zack. Might as well while I'm here playing a paranormal detective, or was it supernatural? I can't remember. All right, so we managed to run into Isabella. We have a puritanical freakout of her wearing pajamas. We talked to Professor Clark about his whole bit. We have a freakout about how we realized that Isabella was right all along, or what Zack told me about a few days prior. How many of these instances have I dismissed since reading the letter? Pretty much all of them. All right, so we head over to Zach's, but Zach is there, so we make ourselves comfy. No, and you're Zach right. Gets back. There really are some odd things going on here lately. How is everything with you lately, Zach? Oh, Pretty hold bad. on, Ash. Both of you. Did I just hear you say that? Is this why Isabella's here? Has something happened? Calm down. We're just here to check on things. So, did you meet Andrew about the photos? Uh, what yeah. photographs? Unlike when he brought up the subject of the photos with me, he doesn't hesitate when Isabella asks for it. I see how it is, Zack. Zack hastily fishes them out of a nearby drawer and hands it to her. I can almost see it in him the one second hindsight kicks in, the realization that she would have been better listening than I. Makes sense when all I've been doing until this morning is call it a Halloween prank. She goes through each of the prints in silence, her shoulders growing stiffer by the second until she has gone rigid and pale. But it is the telling glances they exchange afterwards that speaks volumes of the things running inside their minds. What did Andrew say about them? It could be one. But there's no guarantee it's a supernatural thing. It doesn't always happen. So, that's a dead end right there. Now that I think about it, bothering that guy for this feels pretty silly now. But with the dreams lately... That's all? Did he say anything about the damn letter at Didn't all? Didn't ask. Did you ask him even? I was expecting Zack starts to look at me like I've grown a second head. Yeah, I would too if there was ever a universe where I was standing in front of myself. Because even as a child, I never believed in ghost stories. The lucky charms and mystical objects from my mother have often been stored away or given as paltry gifts to those who would appreciate them more. Yeah, that's really everything. Let it kind of slip my mind. The photos were more important at that time. The photos contain the photos are the key. There was some the key stuff to this about whole the local mystery. horror stories, though. Uh, talked about the curses, and he was really fascinated with the story about a wraith asking for a sacrifice to move on. Kinda nasty, if you ask me. But it does make sense if you simply go along with it. Does it? I'm not sure how this will help in the grand scheme of things. Why are you asking about this anyway? Rose's death isn't just a coincidence, Zack. Okay. So we see the news story. We make some connections there. And again this time, just like our first time through, we get to meet the best character, Seb. We... 
Okay, not quite sure what exactly happened there. For some reason, my recording ended, but let's continue going on here. Didn't really miss much. So, uh, Isabella just told us that her dad has passed away, and we want her to tell us about him. Tell me about him. When? When did this happen? Who did it? All right, so we make Isabella feel a little bit better there. We go to erase the uh, recording here, but we get freaked out because we see the thing. And the, oh, oh God, okay, okay, oh God, I was not fully ready for this. Five, three, two, six, seven, three, nine, eight, two, seven, one, nine. No, I, I freak out with the thing being there, I really do. Oh my God, why, why I'm so freaked out? <laughs> it just, the visual didn't make any sense. It looked like it was so, I just have to not pay attention to that. I swear to God. Okay, six, four, eight, one, nine, five, eight, nine, one, seven, six, one, five, seven, two, seven, three, four, one, two. Okay. All right. So we managed to escape down the elevator. We say goodbye to Seb. We uh, get back with Isabella to the park and have a little moment. All right, so where Isabella is, we're going to start to try to look. Okay, so we look up things there, but then we're worried about Zach. Z-Man has shown me photographs. Much weird things happening around him these past few days. Bottom line, he likely knows as much about this as I do. Why else would he approach me? The guy knows, the guy who knows stuff, according to him. In the end, all I've done is give him the brush off. Some reliable guy I am. Hell, Rebecca's probably in the same boat, grasping for anything that might provide an answer or a way out of this. What can any of us do when all of us lacks any understanding of what's happening? One thing's clear about this, however. That thing is after us because... because of the letter. Mm. Both Rebecca and Zach have seen it, too. She'll go after them, as well. Alright, so... We try to get in touch with Becca here, but Becca's gone, so we try to call her. The added guilt from those times I repeatedly dismissed him will surely haunt Yo, me. Yo, Zach, call me back, alright? I wanted to check in and, uh... Yeah, just please call me back. It's usually a joke between us when I say he's the Watson to my Sherlock. I don't see him as some assistant to put aside until he's needed, like some people like to believe, though. In the end, after the third attempt with no one answering, I stop and move to cut the call with a ragged exhale. Waiting game it is, then. I've been trained for those. Hell, I'm used to them. Just not when it comes to people I'm close to. Much as I keep reminding myself to maintain a level head, it's a whole different matter when it's someone you know. Personal feelings will likely get involved at some point. It's starting now, actually, with the anxious strings coiling and uncoiling, causing a rocket inside my stomach. That's exactly when the line finally connects. Before he even speaks, my question has already slipped out, including every pent-up worry and tension in my body. Where are you? The line's choppy, though. I can still make out the words he's saying. Nothing to worry about, then. He's just someplace where network, network coverage is shitty. Can't imagine where at this time in the morning, though. Did he go out for a jog? What was that, Ish? Could you repeat that? Signal shitty here. I asked, where are you? Hell, Zach, I've been calling your number for a good 20 minutes now. This is so rude. What kind of shithole did you get into? I meant that to sound as friendly as possible, and I failed miserably. Instead, only frustration shows good my time. To you, too. I should be asking you that question. I've been looking all over the mansion for you. I thought you'd be... What mansion? Do I really need to answer that? You're about one day too early. Why are you even... Please don't tell me that's his plan. A morning visit to the mansion where Luke Wright is? Of all the pig-headed things to do right now, it's the best thing he can come up with, breaking and entering? I got plenty of reasons to rail at him right now, although no matter how much I want to give him peace in my mind, unfortunately, it's not the time. No. No, wait. Just get your ass to Isabella's place and hurry. He pauses a moment, a second of indecision while he seems to contemplate his options. How urgent is this? In truth, the question, the hesitance in the indecision in his voice, has caught me completely off guard, and understanding dawns on me. His decision to go there isn't one born of a stupid impulse. He must have found something. However, no matter how urgent it is, he still shouldn't have gone there, alone at that. Despite myself and that split second of comprehension, I allow it to show a weakness. My true self. A simple request brimming with every unease and disquiet causing turmoil within me since last night. It bears a selfish hope that he'll understand, even through the unstable signal, that whatever's keeping him there, he'll be willing to set it aside for now. Pressing enough for you to stop asking questions and get yourself here. Please, Zach. Silence fills the other end of the line again. 
For a long moment, I assume he won't heed it and I'll have to drive there myself. Just to drag him away from whatever danger he's skirting. Thankfully, he agrees. I'll be there in a few. Uh, an hour or two tops. Thanks. I'll see you. See you soon. Relief washes me over as soon as the call ends. Normally, I don't let myself a moment of respite in times like this. Gotta stay alert. Rebecca's still out there, has yet to return any of my messages. But for the moment, I relish in it. This is probably the first time I've permitted myself to do so since last night. Even the muscles in my shoulders have been complaining from all the tension I've taken on. It still annoys me that all I can do right now is grit my teeth and trudge back to Isabella's apartment. Useless. That's what I am in the face of this. A mad dash around Luxmore and Ansem isn't going to help things. It's not like I'll simply stumble across them on the side of the road during a drive. The city's too big a place for one person to go searching for only two people. I'll be lucky if I even glimpse the hair of either of them. With one last hopeful glance towards the open skies, I slip back into Isabella's apartment and close the door behind me. I might have already grown used to this, but the waiting will always, always be the hardest part. More so when it's the people you care about. You're up early. I thought you left. I wouldn't leave you, Isabella. This is not the first time I've seen Isabella like this. Standing casually by a kitchenette, ladle in hand, keeping an eye on whatever's stewing in the stove while humming a soft tune under her breath. Until Zack gets here, or until I receive an answer from Rebecca, whichever comes first. Nevertheless, it's clear she has plenty of questions. Alright, so we have some nice... Yeah, I mean, of course we're gonna take her offer. We're some nice Thank breakfast you. with Isabella. All of a sudden, a knock breaks the moment, and just as fast, both of our attention shifts towards the source. Before things can get awkward fast, I stand up to open the door while muttering some flimsy excuse in the process. I'll get that. It's probably Zach or Rebecca. Really, I know we're in a pinch, but their timing can't get any worse. Unrelated frustrations aside, once I fling the door open, a whole chunk of that stone that had been stuck in the pit of my stomach simultaneously unseats itself. There, in the hallway, stands Zack, his hand raised, ready for another knock. Although he's not the most presentable at the moment, ruffled and drenched with sweat as he is, relief quickly washes over me like a tide. He's still panting when he pushes me aside and heads in. The second his feet crosses the threshold, he scans the place, eyeing what little he can see of the room from the doorway. When fine... When finds none of what he's looking for, he turns to me with a questioning look, one that has a hint of panic. You said it was urgent. Did anything happen? Is it Becca? Bella? Yeah, Isabella's dead, as you can clearly see. Everyone's fine. Well, Becca's not here. She went somewhere this morning and hasn't answered any of my calls yet. But Isabella's... I'm here, Zach. Morning. Morning. His weight shifts at the same time the stiff line in his shoulder eases once Isabella walks up to us and welcomes him with a smile. He relaxes then, returns a greeting kind as soon as he has let out the breath he has been holding and the tension fin tensions finally off his so, body. So, nothing's wrong? Why'd you call me here for Because that? I miss you. <laughs> because I want to see you, Zach. My explanation can wait. He has a lot of explaining to do. The fact that he went to Ansem alone for some godforsaken reason warrants a proper one. Ghost or not, he's already been given a warning. It frustrates me to no end this might be the plan he mentioned the last time we spoke. I get that he's worried about Hannah Wright, somehow they become friends, but that's not the issue here. Not when there's a murderous ghost who might go after one of us at any given time. Sure, Zack made it here in one piece, by some dumb luck he's alright and this takes one off the list of people I need to worry about. Frankly, as annoyed as I am, I can't just stay angry at him when I look at the situation that way. Hell, if that call didn't connect in that exact minute, there might have been a chance he won't be standing here. This is a blessing in itself. Though, first things first, some things still need to be discussed, and that's that you're okay. Thank God. Despite myself, despite the rational part of my brain screaming everything wrong about Zack's neat little plan, we've had so many close calls with just a single night. Zack showing up on Isabel's doorstep, alive, whole, and unharmed. I, I might as well take comfort in that while I still can. You're... you're okay. You did tell me not to do anything stupid. Suddenly, the whole room feels too heavy, and all I'm able to do is drop down on the couch. A headache also threatens to burst at the same moment, or perhaps this is what release from anxiety feels like? Regardless, I reach up a hand to pinch the bridge of my nose, even if I'll likely do nothing to alleviate the impending pain. Christ, you were right there! We have this stupid, stupid, stupid curse thing going on, I hate this right curse! There. You just walked up inside a private property! Those that's a crime! Those easily sue you for breaking and entering, and that's the least of it. I know, Ash. But I can't just leave things as they are. I've gotta do something. I know you're not very fond of the rights. 
but they don't deserve it if something bad happens. Hana most of all. God damn it, Zack, I was worried. <laughs> Unexpectedly, he laughs. Not the half-hearted sort he makes when he's awkward or coming up with an excuse. A genuine one. Before my annoyance grows again and I snap at him, though, he suddenly catches me in a headlock, his arms looping around my neck while he grinds his knuckles against my skull. Helpless, I squirm under his grip and protest. Even then, it's hard to do so when you're up against a six-footer. Zack! Aw, he's worried. Why didn't you say so? <laughs> that cool act ain't gonna fool me anymore. Fine, I'd love you, okay? Give Zack some soft kisses. Let go! Gentle, gentle kisses. He relents soon enough, though only after he's done ample damage to my hair. I hate it when he does that. But for a few moments there, the tense moon finally lightened up, and everything felt like how it used to be before this whole mess again. Makes appreciating little moments like this easier, still. Seriously, Zack, why are you even there? Told you already. I was looking for you. Why would I even go there? Well, you mentioned a plan with Isabella here. I assume that's where you guys went, since that's where she found the letter. No, we broke and entered into a different place. Sorry. I was really at a dead end. The logic and it stuns me into silence, to say the least. Why didn't we just all do something together, or at least share our plans the night before? Then I remember his hesitance, the tone he had taken before agreeing to go here, and all at once my anger from what he's done wanes. Partly, this is my fault for keeping things vague. That's right. I can't berate him for assuming that, when I've only left him with vague answers. You could have called me. I did. I didn't receive any, and my phone was with me. You kidding, right? I was at it the whole night. The whole atmosphere in the room changes in two heartbeats. Back again to the tension riddled one plaguing us. Zachary stares at me like I've grown another head, then gradually he shifts his attention to Isabella. The expression in his eyes questioning, asking for a confirmation, like my word can't be trusted. Not that I'm holding it against him. I can't even believe the things coming out of my mouth these past three hours. Meanwhile, Isabella stays quiet. Has been like that for some time. She looks like she wants to disappear right now. Guilt, frustration, anger, fear, all flashes fleetingly across her face before it melts away under an expression of worry. Please tell me he's joking. You were there? No, we really didn't get any. Everything was quiet last night, but Zack at BRC? Ashton and I saw... Seb. It was really cool. I love seeing him. She never gets to finish that. Abruptly, my phone rings again, blaring its badly sang ringtone throughout the whole room. Both of them pauses, waiting when I pull it up to check the caller ID. It's Becca. I'll tell her to get here as soon as she can. Excuse me. Without another word, I slip out of the room and answer the call. However, however, the tone she assumes isn't what I'm hoping to hear. Are you there? Ragged, a bit out of breath. There's a tinge of urgency to it. Listening to her from my side of the line makes it seem like she's just run a marathon prior to this Becca, call. Becca, where? I got your message. What happened? Nothing. Yet. Where are you? Downtown. I... I had to make a quick visit to the library. Listen, Ash, about that thing Isabella has been talking about. There's something you guys need to... Please tell me you didn't... <sighs> Whatever. Save it for later. I'm at Salemwell. If you can get here as soon as possible, that'd be really great. This is... Related to that. You're there? Is, is Isabella with you? Yeah, Zach too. With a quick press of the button, I switch on the loudspeakers and step back into Isabella's apartment. I hold out the phone towards the two, giving it two shakes, urging them to speak. Both are still carrying worried looks on their faces. This should ease that. Rebecca's asking for you too. Becca? Is she okay? Hey, Becca! What's up, girl? Hello, Rebecca. Odd morning we have, eh? Hey, you two. Over there. Is this something I should be worried about? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're just having a party, and we sort of didn't think to invite you. Sorry. We'll tell you once you get here. Please hurry. I don't like the sound of that, Ash. Uh, but I'm on my way. It gives me a few minutes. I'm driving. She mumbles a goodbye, then hangs up. Beck is the last person I need to account for, yet that call left an even more strained tension in the room. Thankfully, we don't have to linger at it for too long. She only takes a matter of minutes to get here, and the second she steps in the room, Isabella clings to her. I'm so glad you're okay. Ashton Yay. checked on you this morning, but... Everyone's here. The whole gang's here. He did? I I'm sorry. I was in a hurry. I didn't have time to drop by and let you know. It doesn't matter. What's important is you're here. Not birthed to a crisp or brutally murdered somewhere. Whole. Alive. Although she seems a bit shaken, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. At least now I can relax, ease the pressure off my shoulders, if only by some.
But the minute Isabella pulls away from her, she winces. A small reaction. The younger woman doesn't even catch it. It sets a precedence for a careful observation, nevertheless. A closer look at her reveals a much more disheveled than usual. Her hair is in a bit of a mess, probably flattened in a hurry. The back of her dress also shows stains of dirt in places it rarely gets into. She's also leaning more on using her left arm. She's right-handed. Perhaps the most telling is the slight limp she has, noticeable once Isabella leads her into the room. It all sprouts a hat full of questions. What exactly happened and how she ended up in that state? Pretty sure a simple trip to the library won't do that. She's going to the wrong libraries. I grab for her arm before she can walk past, carefully to avoid hurting her, in case there really is an injury. Seems like it at first glance, but you can't be sure until after a careful examination has been made. I suspect some bruising at least. Although minor internal fractures aren't out of the equation, they have a nasty way of staying hidden. Sure enough, Becca tenses immediately upon contact, tries to pull back, although the, the sudden gesture only elicits another wince, forcing her and Isabella to a halt. Both of them turn to me almost at the same time, their eyes searching mine for answers. Rebecca, for her part, doesn't appear quite pleased with the interruption, or the fact someone has brought it to light. That someone also has to make sure. Are you alright? You okay? You're limping. As expected, she tries to hide it. This time, when she squirms from my grasp, it's with enough force she almost stumbles back if Zack hadn't caught her by the elbow. Even with two more people shooting her concerned look, she's swift to shrug it off. It's fine. I just had a little accident. Little accident. Hard to believe when her other arm's nursing the supposedly fine arm. Isabella doesn't buy any of it either. In a library? <laughs> well, I... Uh, yeah, it kind of caught me off guard. You know how dangerous Something's libraries happened there, can be. hasn't it? I don't have to elaborate on the question further. Shortly, she goes very still, and the hand placed over her right arm shifts ever so light, slightly, its grip on the limb tightening. Not too firm to hurt, but just enough for a gesture of comfort for herself. Warily, she casts a glance at everyone in the room. But only the one she spares for Isabella lingers longer. In that moment, something unspoken passes between them. An understanding. It strikes me seconds later how utterly familiar her expression is. It's the same one I've seen far too many times in Isabella. Since that day at the movie house, every time her attempts to warn us have been so rudely dismissed. Let me see. Can... can we? We have to check if it's bad. Rebecca hesitates for a moment. Then, after a minute of consideration, she sighs and reaches for the hem of her sleeve, raises it just enough for Isabella to take a good look at it. Not swollen, but a large portion of her skin starting to turn an ugly shade of purple. Oh, that is gonna be one hell of a nasty bruise. Becca, that's disgusting. Get out of here. Tell me about it. It was a library cart that hit me. You know, the old metal ones they keep near the history section. That would certainly suck. Ouch! Like I said, nasty. But she's there? She went after you. Yeah, I, I was in the archives looking something up. Suddenly, she was just there. Belle, she was using my own students against me. And that's just what unfair. What kind of terrible, terrible person does that? Oh, it makes my blood boil. You should have just ran. That woman's not something you can hit with a, with a book. <laughs> Laugh it's it not up, Luke Ashton. Right. I did. Then the bloody cart came out of nowhere. And you know what? If it weren't for a damn book, I would be dead by now. Silence descends to the room as the gravity of that one word hits all of us. Dead. Another close call, another would have, another one we've narrowly avoided. How long can we keep this up? We're bound to break at one point. No normal human being with a sane mind can last like this. It's a miracle Isabella hasn't cracked yet. After all, she was the one who found that letter. I expected her to have caved in by now, yet her voice, calm and composed in the face of this, is what cuts through the thick air. I'll go get a cold compress for that arm. You guys take a seat first. Ashton and I, we, we have a lot of things to talk about. Yeah, we do. We're talking about a relationship, right? That marks the end of it, at least for the time being. And as soon as Isabella returns and hands Rebecca the cold compress she promised, we get straight down to business. Surprisingly easy considering the rigid air in the room. Although there's some tense fumbling for words at first, the whole conversation gains steam once what happened last night at BRC has been put on the table. All at once, everything we brushed off, carelessly ignored, and rudely dismissed, mostly by me, have been laid out for close scrutiny. Zack's encounters with a woman and his dreams, Rebecca's close brushes with death every time she appears, the dread, the fear, the terror she brings out, even in the bravest of us. Everything. 
Because no matter how bleak this all seems, there must still be a way out of this. There has to be. Logic be damned. Or at least that's what Isabel and I would like to believe. Alright, so this... Nope, okay. Yet even as the cold morning light shifts to the warm hues of late afternoon and eventually night, none of this still makes a fucking damn sense. Darkness has fallen, but we're still nowhere near figuring things out. If anything, we're more at a loss than we've ever been before we even started this. The next thing I know, frustration rears its ugly head, and the sheets of paper I've been holding smacks the table harder than I've intended. The sound of it echoes loudly in the small room, and everyone simply falls silent. Another with it is a release along with it is a release of another long held breath. Perhaps the hundredth since this. We aren't morning. getting anywhere at this rate. I hate looking at paper. Don't just drop it. There must be something in this we aren't seeing yet. Isabella, this is boring. It's an odd thing to hear from her. The very words I've been telling myself every single time I find myself facing a dead end. We can use a little of the optimism right now, I guess. I know, but what are we supposed to be looking at here in the first place? Well, you already looked through those files. You're the one that picked it out last night, right? All of them? I'm pretty sure every person we've checked in there isn't necessarily involved. One client possibly died of old age. Remember, you found that dumb paper. <laughs> Not so dumb if it can kill out of us. No, it still can be uh, dumb. Uh, very funny, Z-Man. Anyway, like I said, you discovered that paper right before the open house. No one else was allowed inside during that time. It's too broad of a scope if we include every single person. In fact, the only notable ones are C and Jean Marie. But if we're going to include them in the count, shouldn't there have been more than enough people to end this fucking curse already? Ignore that last part, Ash. How does this even work? Yeah, okay. They went in and out of this place. But no. You still don't get it. What I'm trying to say about those clients is... Shouldn't we look into the mansion too? That's where the letter came from. That's where she came from. Maybe it's just as the professor says. He did tell me there might be more to this than what I might be thinking. Yeah. I mean, look at all this stuff Rebecca brought with her. Apparently our teachers have been lying to us all these years. So who knows? Hey, now don't blame us. Blame the bloody books they wrote. <laughs> Don't blame my whole profession. Quietly, Isabella reaches from the papers Rebecca has brought with her and carefully inspects the words printed on the page. A copy of an old newsprint from even before the city has been founded. Horizon narrows with each line and it passes, but lingers at the illustration of the noblewoman's servant. Why do they have to keep this in the restricted section? Rebecca merely shrugs at her inquiry, but her own annoyance seeps through her answer. How should I know? I wasn't even aware we have archives that go as far back as this. This is before the city was even founded. As a matter of fact, if it weren't for Andrew's help, I wouldn't have gotten my hands on any of it. So really, Andrew's helped everyone Maybe here. they didn't think it would be important to talk about it. After all, this is more Anselm's than ours. That or some old bugger's hiding something. Why else would they tell us a completely different story? Revising what's written seems a useless endeavor on its own when you have nothing to gain from it. But this might as well mean that what happened in that mansion years ago also equates into all of this. And the letter Isabella found? It's at the heart of it. That's the why and the how is what we're missing here. But I'm going to go by what Andrew told Zach. The connection between the letter and the mansion's curse may run deeper than what we've initially thought. We won't be able to figure this out without looking into the other. Fuck. How do I? The mansion's private property now. Can't just waltz in there. I'd rather die before I even think of begging Wright to let me in investigate the place. One thing's very clear after these last two days, however. We're not safe anywhere, and I have to act fast if I want to keep my own friends alive. We can't keep running away. Sooner or later, she'll get us. Before that happens, I have to put an end to this. Sighing, I stand up and stretch out the kinks in my back after several hours of sitting. We've been at this for too long. A break is needed. Time to let everything to sink in, or else we'll all burn out. I know I will. It's another thing I cannot let happen when they're all counting on me like this. Albeit unspoken, it's in their eyes as they look up at me. We've waiting. been at this since morning. We should take a break for a few. The rest of it never makes it out of my mouth, as something heavy and grating sounds at the far end of the room. A harsh booming noise rending through the eardrums of everyone in the room. All at once, the three of them are on their feet while I quickly palm for my gun on the table. I just start shooting the cabinet, <laughs> randomly. However, before I can pull it up and remove the safety, the whole racket stops. Stillness descends in the room and amidst the sudden hush, the four of us exchange anxious glances. So much for a break. Ashton, that might be... Gather everything. No questions asked. They waste no time getting to work, piling up the documents we've been reading through. Even Isabella's is unusually silent as she gathers everything in her arms, her own movements sharp and precise, a deep furrow in her brow. There's fear, but something hardened and urgent overshadows it. But the moment doesn't last. 
Before we can even finish it, another noise ups the tension, already gripping the place. Suddenly, the lights go out and the wardrobe at the end of the room rattles, as if something inside begs for freedom. Cautiously, eyes glued to it, I take a step forward and I release the lock from my gun. I'm not a trigger happy person, I'm not even sure if this will work in a ghost, but right now, its smooth surface against my palm, with a trigger on my finger, provides the closest thing I have to relief as I approach the closet. Ashton, what are you doing? I, I don't think that's a good idea. We should just... Worried as they all are, they immediately stop at the slight raise of my hand. But the edge is there while they all huddle in the space between the door and the room. In case this goes south, whatever I find inside, they have enough time and space to run from their position. In two deep breaths, I crossed the room and stood in front of the closet. Whatever's inside is yet to stop thrashing. Instead, it is now moved to banging at the door, louder and louder the longer I dally. Another shallow breath, a glance at my companions, a nod. Something creaks. Then, in the next moment, I am gra grasping at the handles and swing the doors wide open to reveal nothing. Right away, I part the clothes, hanging on it, and still none. No ghost, no woman, not a single trace of whatever, whoever, is inside. Confused, I glance back towards my companions, only to see them mirroring the same expression on my face. The noise has finally stopped, but I'm quite sure it isn't my imagination. Or maybe it is, and I'm just too strung up, and my head's making things up. Whatever the case is, we need to get out of here as soon as possible. This only confirms we aren't safe anywhere. Without bothering to close it, I move back, ready to leave, adrenaline now coursing through every vein in my body. In the next second, I'm barking orders and- We should go. Everyone, we need to- I'm sent sprawling my back as something cold catches my ankle and yanks. The resulting fall knocks the wind out of me. Pain racks my whole spine and the back of my head as it collides against the floor with force enough to dislodge my own brain from my skull. A moment lasts before stars fade from my vision, and then I sense it. Cold tendrils twisting around my ankles, the smell of vile rot assaulting my nose, nauseating, sickening. A foul smell draining every feeling in my body. The moment her horrid laughter, still as unpleasant and vicious as last time I've heard it, reaches my ears, my eyes snap open. Perhaps it's just an experience. Maybe my mind's still attempting to comprehend this. Regardless, the minute my eyes lay on her, the whole of my body freezes, the gun in my hand turns useless, and my grip on it slackens. It's in the manner her gaze bores on me, I'll say. The look of utter hatred and malice, I've seen it loads of times. Some suspects, mostly murderers, never regretted their actions despite being caught. This is the face of someone you can no longer reason with. And I know the moment she laughs again and starts dragging me toward her, it's already Ashton, going to be the- snap out of it! No, I can't die here. Not yet. The haze, haze fades from my mind and instincts kicks in, then Everyone there. Out! Get out! Get out! With one powerful tug, I yank my foot out of her grip and scramble back to my feet, ignoring the piercing wail she fills the room with. Within the span of a second, I'm gunning for the door, grabbing the wrist of the first person my hand can reach and leading everyone out. Into the hallway, down the flight of steps, and right inside my car. I was no time flooring the glass gas pedal the second the last person closes the door behind them. In a short while, I'm driving us out of Salem Walk. I don't even entertain the thought of winding down just yet, even as the last of the woman's painful cries fade into the night. Alright. Well, I was hoping that we'd be able to get a little further into uh, Ash's chapter this time, but that's no problem. I know they kind of... I, th that's, that's one thing that I wish they did a little differently, is that like a lot of the stuff that we just read is stuff that we have seen before, but it won't actually let us skip it. Because it's, like, slightly different. The context is slightly different, right? But, alright. Well, we are going to have to uh, continue on with Ash's chapter next time, then. Probably finish it then. And then move on to uh, Mr. Luke Wright. Until then, this has been Downstage Gaming. I have been your host, Josh. And I will catch you all next time.